porque estaba medio dormido el tipo aquí. No, ve, no se me hace así, Alili. Se fue peor, ah, pero... Ay, vaya, pues nothing. Peor, está bien, nothing. Lo <risa> <risa> dije en el tiche. Lo dije en el tiche. Me están haciendo paja las chicas, tiche, así que... Uh -huh. Ay, oh, my God. Ay, no. Como solo, imagínense que solo, ah, solo Marvin está ahí. Ellos sí. los mujeres. <ríe> oh my Benditas God. mujeres. Bendito entre las mujeres. Uh, Marvin. The woman's power. Marvin. Yes. <ríe> ok, eh, we are going to start. And we are in session number three of this last week. We are almost at the end. Mañana terminamos con lo que es este curso. Eh, mañana será el último día y necesito recordarles algo. Si no han terminado el, el trabajo en la plataforma, para mañana tiene que estar completo. O por lo menos, como se les pide, el 80%. Este, también tiene que estar completo lo que es el midterm, que es el examen final. Eh, para que se les eh, tome en cuenta todo el progreso ¿verdad? que han tenido en la plataforma. Voy a volver a preguntar. Eh, I think it will be like the last time. Podría ser como la última vez que le voy a preguntar, pero hay alguien que tenga problemas con la plataforma, con algún ejercicio que no ha podido resolver o con algo que eh, le haga falta para poder resolverlo en los primeros minutos de esta sesión. Si hay alguien que tenga problemas, puede decirme en qué sección es, en qué ejercicio, y lo vamos a resolver. Yo no, Ticha, ya finalicé. Very good. No, no sé si los demás. Si no, es porque ya todos terminaron todo lo de la plataforma y es es algo muy bueno. bastante que se conecta. Yes, I know. Sí. Well, but in this case, I am just to like making this this uh, information. I'm giving this information to you because it is necessary to uh, remember that part. Así que solo estamos recordando, verdad. Um, esa parte de, de la plataforma, que no tenemos que dejarla afuera de todo el trabajo que estamos haciendo, porque básicamente es lo que nos evalúa a nosotros. So, I think that we are not going to have like any issue with the, with the platform, so we are going to start with the topic. Remember that we were like uh, talking about the future chances, we were seeing the future chances. And we end that topic yesterday. But now we are going to have like a different part of the future tense. We are going to remember that information, but in this case, we are going to talk about an, a specific structure that we use in present. But in this case, we are going to use this structure for the future. Vamos a ver una estructura en específico que nosotros utilizamos en el presente para referirnos a acciones en el futuro. Ahora bien, we are going to have two parts in this session. We are going to see the structure in present that we are going to use in the future, but we are going to make like a review of that tense. Vamos a hacer el, el, el resumen. Vamos a recordar las partes de ese de esa estructura que es el present continuous, que es una estructura que ya hemos visto antes, pero que solo vamos a recordar cuáles son las partes que tiene, cómo se forma, eh, los elementos, dónde lo usamos y todo lo demás. Y luego, we are going to talk about present continuous for future actions, porque utilizamos lo que es el presente continuo para el futuro, y también hemos utilizado el presente simple para el futuro. Pero en este caso nos vamos a enfocar en el present continuous. And how can we use this present continuous for future actions? And how can we create that situation? Or in which cases we are going to use this specific structure to talk about some situations in the future? So. We are going to begin with this uh, session. 
And tomorrow we are going to have two different topics, but they are kind of short. And we are going to have like 50-50 of the sessions with those, uh, with those topics. So let's see. I was saying that we are going to begin with the topic or the first part of the session that is the present continuous. So in this case, we are going to um, see how can we create this uh, structure in this case? So the present continuous is made for uh, the present tense of the verb be and the ing. Eso es algo que nosotros ya conocemos. Esto se hace utilizando la forma del verbo to be en presente, pero eh, agregamos los verbos en continuo. En este caso, agregándole el ing al verbo que va después del verbo to be, porque en este caso, verb to be is not the main verb that we are going to use. In this case, it's like an auxiliary. And the main verb is the one with the ing form. So let's see. We have some examples and we are going to see these examples. This is just a review of this structure. Then we're going to see the other part. So in this case, we have, I am, I am working. I am working. In this case, you have the subject, then the verb to be that is related to the subject. And then you have the verb with the ing. You have the verb work and you add the ing to this, um, to this verb. So we have the first example, I am working. Then you are playing. He is talking. And she is Living. Esta parte no es como que muy difícil para nosotros porque ya la hemos trabajado el tema eh, que ya lo hemos visto con anterioridad, así que solo lo vamos a recordar para luego eh, explicar cómo lo vamos a utilizar en el futuro. So, in this case, don't worry for this part. Then, we have another one. It is eating. We are staying and in the last one we have they are sleeping they are sleeping just like this we have our examples and it says we use the present continuous to talk about and we are going to divide the uses that we can give for this structure And we are going to see number one. And we have activities at the moment of speaking. Activities at the moment of speaking. So we are going to talk about uh, the activities that we are performing in this precise moment when we are talking. So in this case, we can say, uh, we are uh, reading, we are listening, we are writing, we are watching, we are eating, we are drinking, or the action that we are doing 
in the moment we are speaking with other uh, people in this case. So we have uh, some examples for this one. And we have here, I am just leaving work. I will be home in an hour. I am just leaving work. I will be home in an hour. Y en este ejemplo podemos ver que estamos utilizando dos estructuras, dos tiempos diferentes. Estamos utilizando lo que es el present um, continuous y también estamos utilizando el future simple. I am just leaving work. Estoy dejando el trabajo o me estoy yendo del trabajo. I will be home in an hour. Voy a estar en mi casa en una hora. Así que estamos combinándolo en este caso. But they are not related at the moment. So then we have please be quiet. Please be quiet. And they say the children are sleeping. The children are sleeping. Then we have number two, and it is future plans or arrangements. Future plans. Arrangements. Okay, give me a second. Done. Okay. And arrangements. And we have the examples. Mary is going to a new school next term. Is going to a new school. Next term. What are you doing next week? What are you doing next week? En este, the future plans or arrangements es cuando nosotros ya tenemos planes establecidos o queremos establecer estos planes. Es como um, uno es hacer planes y el, el, I mean, uno es tener el plan hecho y el otro es hacer el plan. En este caso tenemos dos ejemplos. Mary is going to a new school next term. Mary va a ir a otra escuela cuando se termine, digamos, el, el ciclo o cuando se termine el, el periodo, ¿verdad? En el que está de estudio. Pero ya lo planificamos. Así que ella se va a ir a otra escuela. En el otro, ¿qué vas a hacer o qué vas a estar haciendo? la próxima semana. Ahí, cuando nos respondan, nosotros podemos establecer una nueva acción. What are you doing next week? Oh, nothing. And we can say, can we go to the cinema? Eh, let's eh, go out for a dinner. Um, let's watch a movie at my house or whatever you want to do. En ese caso es planificar, es buscar tener una nueva um, un plan nuevo, dependiendo de la respuesta que nos den. So in this case, future plans or arrangements. Then we have questions for the future continuous. I mean, the present continuous. So in this case, we have just like two different uses or um, in this case, just for activities at the moment or future plans, but they are not too long. In this case, it's a very short uh, topic or um, it has like a very short information about this uh, tense. So it is not going to be very long. Then we have present continuous questions. And at the end of this explanation of the present continuous, uh, we are going to have like one or two exercises, and then we are going to talk about the present continuous of future. And we say, we make questions by putting am um, 
is or are in front of the subject. So in this case, we are going to make questions with the verb to be at the beginning of the sentence. So in this case, we are not going to use like WH words or um, auxiliaries, like will, do, have, or anything like that. We are just going to use the verb to be to make questions. So we are going to see the example. We have here, are you listening? Are you listening? Next one, are they coming to your party? Are they coming to your party? When is she going home? In this case, we're going to use the WH word. We have two and two. This one is with the WH word. When is she going home? And this other one is with a, another WH word. What am I doing here? I guess it's going to rain a little hard in a couple of minutes or something like that because it's sounding very um, strong. So in this case, vamos a tener preguntas. Básicamente, sí podemos hacer preguntas utilizando el WH word, porque básicamente es como una de las formas eh, más fáciles de hacer preguntas, pero también podemos utilizar el verbo to be para hacer preguntas. En este caso, nos vamos a enfocar en el verbo to be para hacer nuestras preguntas cuando estemos utilizando este um, o esta estructura. Pero sí tenemos las dos opciones, el verb to be for questions and WH word for these questions. Now, how to form the negative uh, sentence? Present continuous and negative. We make negative by putting not or and t after m is or are. This is very simple because in this case we use just the word not. We make negatives by putting not. Oh. It changes the language again. Not after M um, is N R. Okay. En este caso solo vamos a agregar el not a lo que son las oraciones negativas. Es como lo más común en las frases negativas, así que no es como muy difícil porque ya tenemos la base de las eh, oraciones eh, positivas y ya simplemente le vamos a agregar el not a esa misma base que ya tenemos. So we are going to see the examples. And we have here. I'm not doing that. Um, not doing that. You aren't listening. You are not or aren't listening. Next one, they aren't coming to the party. They aren't coming to the party. She 
she isn't going home until Monday. She isn't going home until Monday. And in this case, when we are talking about the continuous, and in this case, it's not just for the present, we can use it for the past or the future. We have like a category of verbs that it's called a steady verb eh, that we are not going to use it with this structure. Hay una parte de los verbos que se le llama verbos estáticos in Spanish and in English is a steady verb. Estos verbos no funcionan muy bien con el continuous. Y normalmente no los usamos eh, juntos. En este caso los usamos eh, de forma separada porque no quedan bien juntos. Eh, más que todo son estos verbos que tienen que ver con sentimientos o con, eh, sí, con los sentidos, con los sentimientos y que no se utilizan con los continuos. Sí hay excepciones de algunos de estos verbos, pero en, la, en su mayoría no quedan bien con el continuo. We are going to see some example of these verbs that we are not going to use with the continuous form eh, or the continuous structure. So the first group of um, of a steady verbs that we are going to see are those verbs that uh, has to be of thinking and feeling. In este caso, vamos a ver verbos que tienen que ver con pensar y con sentir. Those verbs we are not going to use it for the continuous form because uh, they don't work too well together. So that is the reason in which we are not going to use those kind of uh, verbs. So here we have some example of these uh, verbs. In this case, we can have believe, dislike, know, like, love, hate, prefer, realize, we can also have a recognize, remember, suppose, think. And in this case, think is about a, a believe. So in that case, it's related to believe. Then understand. want and wish. So remember that in some cases we are going to see some of these uh, verbs in, um, in continuous but they are not too common or we try to avoid to use uh, this kind of uh, verbs with the uh, continuous form. 
Then we have the second one. That is to be with verbs of the senses. Son los sentidos, ¿verdad? Vamos a, a omitir o tratar de no incluir aquellos verbos que tienen que ver con los sentidos. And in here we have a beer, feel, look, seem, smell, sound, and taste. And we have other uh, exceptions for this one, or the ones that we're not going to use with the, um, the continuous part. So, other verbs. And let me... Read. I mean... Outside, please. Okay, in this case, we have agree. We have be, belong, disagree. We have need. O, own, and possess. So in this case, they are like um, not too common to see in this kind of uh, structures. Maybe we can use it, but they are not like the favorite things to do with this um, with this structure. So in this case, we need to like avoid to use this kind of verbs when we are talking or when we are using the continuous form. And also we can use the, pres the present continuous to talk about something which is happening before and after in a specific time. Something which we think is temporary, that's not like we are going to do the whole time. And something which is new in contrast with a previous state something which is changing, growing, or developing, and something which happens again and again. Entonces, también podemos utilizar esta estructura para algo que está pasando antes y después de un, un tiempo en específico, para algo que nosotros pensamos que es temporario, que no va a durar toda la vida, porque lo vamos a cambiar o va a cambiar eh, con el tiempo. Luego, algo que es nuevo y que contrasta con un estado previo, algo que está cambiando, que está creciendo y que se está desarrollando. And in this case, it can be uh, people or it can be something like, uh, we can call it like an idea or something that has to be with nature. Y algo que pasa una vez y otra vez y otra vez y otra vez. So let's see, we are going to have two exercises, two short exercises because they are not too long. Vamos a ver dos pequeños ejercicios para pasar a la segunda parte del tema de hoy. So let's see. We are going to have just simple simple, simple sentences. So in this case, we have these sentences, I think. And we are going to like write the correct words. Vamos a, a decir las palabras correctas. 
I uh, voy a escribir el, el, the sentence and you are going to tell me what is the correct form of the word or what is the word that we are missing in that sentence. Así que les voy a poner seis oraciones, six simple sentences y ustedes me van a decir qué es lo que le falta a esa oración. So, you can uh, begin reading uh, the sentence and you are going to tell, ah, that is very simple, but that is the point. Así que voy a comenzar escribiendo las oraciones y luego me van diciendo qué le falta a esa oración. So six uh, sentence, I will give you time to read it, to think about uh, the answer. So don't worry, you have a couple of minutes to answer uh, those exercises. So you have uh, like two or three minutes to find the answer. So we are going to begin with that time right now.
part one and part by part. Let's begin with the number one. Would you please be quiet? I to do my homework. Puedes estar en silencio. Puedes callarte. I what? Try. Yes, that Train. is the one. But in this case, I need to write two words. Try this, okay. But I need to work. I am to trying. Work. Ah, good. I am trying. Yeah. I am trying. trying to do my homework. Estoy tratando de hacer mi tarea. Number two. Can I phone you later? We just our dinner. Teacher, pero por qué esa oración lleva como símbolo de pregunta? Oh. Because I, I write it by mistake. Don't worry. It is not a question. Oh, sorry. No, don't worry. Um, the we, second, we are um, just cooking our diner. Um, we are? Yes, so just, we are just. Just sing. Oh, okay. Eating. 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 Our we are diner. just. Eating. Okay. Ay, me ganó el Santiago, no puedo creerlo. <laughs> That's for you, lady. Eating. <laughs> Then we have number three. Could you stop the car, please? I sick. I'm sick. I sick. I am. Another word. Sick. Yes, but we need to write another word. I am. I'm not complete sick, but I am. I'm feeling sick. Good, I am feeling. Me estoy sintiendo enferma. Por eso dice, ¿podría detener el carro? Por favor, me estoy sintiendo enferma. O sea que se siente mareado, podemos decirlo. Then, can I take a message? Ray, ¿qué está haciendo Ray? Writing. It says a shower at the moment. Mm. Una ducha, pero ¿qué está haciendo él? Um, is is taking. Good, he's taking. Está tomando una ducha. He's taking a shower at the moment. Next one. It is okay if we take a taxi. Está bien que tomemos un taxi. I problems uh, with my car today. I I, I am. Uh -huh. I am having. what? Having. Good. I am having problems with my car. Estoy teniendo problemas con mi carro. And the last one. Would you start cooking dinner? Podrías empezar a cocinar la cena. I the office now. Ahí sí podría ir cooking. In this case, uh, the first part is cooking. En la primera sí llevamos cooking, pero aquí dice algo de la oficina. ¿Qué está haciendo ella en la oh, oficina? Okay. Está the working. Working. I am is... working. He... Um... Si lleva para la casa, ¿qué está haciendo ella? ¿Cuál es la acción que está haciendo ella? Going. Mm, another one. Traduciendo. Living. Driving. Living. Living. Está dejando la oficina. I am leaving. I am leaving the office now. Estoy dejando la oficina ahora. Por eso le dice, podrías eh, empezar a cocinar la cena. Estoy dejando la oficina en este momento o ahora. That's good. Now, we're going to see the other part of uh, this topic because we need to talk about this uh, uh, structure of this tense for the, uh, for the future. So in this case, si estamos hablando del presente continuo, ¿cómo es posible que al hablar de acciones que están pasando en este preciso momento, yo pueda utilizar esta estructura para el futuro? 
Vamos a ver cómo es que funciona esto. We have a four tenses in a future. That is the tenses that we were learning yesterday. We have the future simple, the future continuous, the future perfect, the future perfect continuous. But in English, we also often use the present continuous for the future. Of course, we usually use the present continuous when we talk about what is happening at the moment. But in some cases, we use present continuous when we talk about the future. And one of the things that we need to keep in mind is when we are talking about planned future when um, we are going to use this uh, tense, when we talk about events in the future, if these events are planned and we are sure that it will happen. En este caso, vamos a hablar de planes que tenemos para el futuro, pero que estamos 100% seguros de que sí van a suceder. No simplemente porque a mí se me ocurrió en el momento eh, hacerme un sándwich, yo voy a utilizar el, el present continuous. No, en este caso es planificar. Tiene que ver mucho con planificar qué es lo que vamos a hacer y estar seguro de que sí lo vamos a hacer. Oh, I, I'm going to watch a, a movie tomorrow night, for example, but I know that I have the tickets for that eh, eh, movie and I'm going to go to the cinema to watch the movie. So in that case, we need to be 100% secure that we are going to perform that situation. So here we have like a very uh, specific information about this uh, structure is be careful because it really should be something planned, organized, a point. In this case, we have no doubts that the event will happen. En este caso tiene que ser algo que ha sido bien planificado, que um, ya está organizado y que ya está anotado o apuntado en una agenda que va a suceder. So en este caso, no tenemos que tener dudas de qué vaya a pasar. Ah, sí, voy a ir a visitar a mis tíos. Tal vez si tengo tiempo. No, en este caso es, sí, voy a llegar el lunes a tales horas y porque ya no tengo tiempo, digamos, el siguiente día. En este caso es estar 100% seguros de que sí va a suceder y que no podemos cambiar esa situación porque ya lo planificamos. Solo en ese caso sí podemos utilizar el present continuous for future 
um, actions. When we have the security that we are going to do or we are going to perform that action. And we have an example here. And it says, John is watching this movie at the cinema. It could be sound kind of a basic, but this has an explanation. And let me show you what is the explanation of this sentence. John is watching a movie, I mean this movie at the cinema. We can think that, ah, John is watching a movie, that's good. But what is the thing with this sentence? It means that John has planned this early and John has no doubts that he will watch the movie at the cinema. John estaba seguro de que quería ver esa película. Y lo más seguro es que John eh, compró los boletos o compró el boleto para poder ir al cine. O sea, lo planificó desde antes, compró el boleto y se fue al cine a ver la película. No es que simplemente él pensó, voy a ver la película, ya voy a ver cuándo tengo tiempo, veré qué día puedo. No, él estaba seguro que quería ver esa película, ese momento en específico, compró el boleto, se fue para el cine y ahora él está viendo la película. Then, we have another uh, sentence that it says, Jessica is visiting her grandmother on Wednesday. Here we have an, a specific day. Jessica is visiting her grandmother on a Wednesday. So in this case, this doesn't mean that Jessica is just expecting to visit her grandmother. This means that Jessica has no doubt that this will happen. Jessica did her best to make it happen. Jessica's grandmother is waiting for her. Jessica will definitely be at her grandmother on, just on Wednesday. En este caso, eh, estamos diciendo que Jessica eh, tal vez está trabajando, está muy ocupada y planificó que el día miércoles ella va a ir a visitar a su abuela. Ahora bien, ¿podemos decir que puede cambiar la situación? Sí, claro que sí, puede suceder alguna cosa que vaya a hacer que cambie esta situación. Pero Jessica está 100% segura que va a ir el miércoles a visitar a su abuela. ¿Por qué? Primero, su abuela ya la está esperando. Segundo, ella ya eh, apartó ese día para ir donde su abuela y pudo haber cancelado algún otro plan que tenía para ir y ver a su abuela. O sea, ella no lo va a cambiar porque ya tiene ese día planificado. Now, how can we form the present continuous um, sentence for future? Ya tenemos la estructura del el present continuous, pero ¿cómo vamos a, us a usar estas estructuras para el futuro? Let's see.
So in this case, we're saying that we are going to use the same elements of the structure that we have uh, learned about the uh, present continuous. In this case, we have some examples of uh, subjects that we can use. We have I, uh, he, a dog, people, John, because in this case, we can use whatever subject we want to use for that uh, sentence. Then in this case, remember that we are using the verb to be, and we have that they have three forms, that is am, um, is, and are, that is the basic. And then we have the verb, the verb with ing. And we have different uh, verbs in this case, reading, walking, playing, And the complement of the sentence that we are going to, um, to use. The thing with this sentence is that we are going to use like a specific time. For example, in this sentence that we have here, I am meeting him next Friday. I am meeting him next Friday. Le estamos agregando un tiempo en específico. Ahí estamos especificando en qué momento Vamos a ver la persona que sea en el futuro. I am meeting him next Friday. Voy a tener una reunión con él o me voy a estar reuniendo con él el próximo viernes. And then you know that we have the uh, structure for the question and the negative that is the same. But the thing is that we need to specify the time. Lo único que vamos a hacer con eso es especificar exactamente en qué tiempo, en qué momento vamos a realizar esa acción. And now I'm going to write some examples that you can use um, to express your ideas in a present continuous uh, talking about future. Así que voy a ponerles como última parte unos ejemplos de oraciones que podemos utilizar para expresar um, futuro con el present continuous.
So here we have some examples. We have, I'm spending Christmas with my sister on the beach. We are meeting Uncle John today. Simon is coming to town this week. We are coming to Paris soon. Tomorrow, my father and mother are coming to Seoul. I am spending the next weekend with my daughter and we are meeting him at four in Rhode Island. En este caso, estamos siguiendo lo que es la estructura del, um, del present continuous, pero siempre especificando el tiempo en el que nosotros vamos a hacer esas acciones. Tenemos que especificar el tiempo para determinar que sí eh, lo vamos a hacer en el futuro, no simplemente en ese preciso momento del presente, del presente sino que en el futuro. Ok, it's time. Vamos a terminar esta sesión y nos queda one more session tomorrow. We are going to end the course tomorrow, so we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night and see you. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys.